There's a lot of sass in the business of getting us to recycle our plastic. Hey, hey! Give it back, that's mine! Don't get me wrong, that's not a bad thing. It's important to grab our attention. Ooh, la, la. Chances are you haven't met this water bottle before. Aww. And you probably won't see it again because our recycling system is broken. That's the thing about recycling, right? We chuck something away, hope for the best, out of sight, out of mind. But we're starting to realize that maybe recycling isn't the magical solution we thought it was. Consumers have been manipulated. Those plastic straws or pizza boxes by design cannot be recycled. Cannot be recycled. But what if there's a way we could turn things around? What if we could make every plastic product reusable and even get rid of plastic waste altogether? Global production of plastics doubled over the past 20 years. We've been protesting it since the 1970s. And yet our consumption has quadrupled since then. Unfortunately, chucking your milk bottles into the recycling isn't enough because less than 10% of all plastic ever made is recycled. Plus, there's tons of different types of plastic and not all of them can be recycled together. And companies don't really help. They mislead consumers by adding really confusing recycling labels on their products. And that confusion has led to a huge chunk of our recycling ending up in landfills and the ocean and even our blood. Scientists in the Netherlands have detected microplastic pollution in human blood. Guys, this is getting out of hand. We need to fix recycling. Or better yet, we need to create a more efficient system with less waste. Our current economy operates on a take-make-waste model. A company uses resources to make a bottle of water, let's say. You drink the water, then throw the bottle away. This process is linear, and it's a huge waste because things that are perfectly reusable get literally thrown away. But what if we turn that line into a circle? Instead of throwing away used plastic, we redesign it to be used over and over again so that it never becomes waste in the first place. We close that loop between buying a product and throwing it away. This is called the circular economy. Nothing is wasted and everything goes into making everything else. It's a new way of doing business. Bum, bum, bum. Look at the Netherlands. It's already out there. The Dutch economy aims to be 100% circular by 2050. And even though they've got an impressive 80% recycling rate, it's a huge task to fully transform the economy. Companies will be responsible for the plastic they produce instead of blaming you for the pollution it causes. And recycling becomes just one part of a larger process in a bigger system. Their transition agenda covers a lot. Investment plans, policy statements, plastic flowcharts, and even where and how to recycle your mattress. And despite the positive signs, they're still behind on schedule. Redesign is also expensive, especially when we're trying to solve a problem that's still getting worse every single day. And while the Netherlands can afford to do this on a large national scale, lower income countries are gonna to have to do this on their own terms. And there are already some really inspiring examples out there. In Senegal, a country that has a massive plastics pollution problem, people are taking matters into their own hands and starting their own informal circular economy. While Dakar's landfill is problematic for many other reasons, local people are turning waste into resource. Every day, 2,000 people handpick tons of plastic and turn it into floor mats, tables, and other household items. This may not seem big, but the accumulative impact of small-scale local solutions are a huge step towards fundamental change. And let's be honest, they often go unacknowledged. Take Indonesia, for example. It has undeniably a massive pollution problem. In 2020, the government had partnered with businesses and local communities to reach near zero ocean plastic pollution by 2040. The results? Amazing local initiatives, such as the MVU Zero Waste Living Lab, a venture that creates solutions to eliminate single-use plastic. Introducing Cup Kita, the first reusable cup service for drinks in Indonesia. This collective effort contributed to a 15% decrease of plastic going into the ocean in 2021. That's a good start. For the circular economy to work properly, it must be a collective effort. Governments cannot override communities and communities can't do this without government. This is crucial because it helps make sure no one is left behind. Remember the waste pickers in Senegal? The government plans to close that landfill and outsource all recycling to smaller centers in a joint initiative with the World Bank. And while that's great news for plastic recycling, it's not so great for the local community who fear they might lose their livelihoods as a result.
Let's be honest, transitioning to a circular economy is not going to be easy. But guys, this stuff is an instinct. We've been doing it for ages. The impact of transitioning into a circular economy may be radical, but the idea really isn't. We may have picked up problematic new consumer habits over the past hundred years or so, but as a species, we've been crafty for a lot longer than that. We're resourceful, we always have been. We just need to design a new economy on that basis. And if we do it right, local communities all over the world can benefit. So, whichever way you look at it, it's a win, win, win. <laughs>